Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, continuing uh, the theory of probabilities, we are talking about conditional probabilities and in particular about independent events. Um, now, this lecture is part of uh, Advanced Mathematics for Teenagers presented on unizor.com website and that's where I actually suggest you to, uh, to watch this lecture from because there are notes for the lecture which are very useful and uh, um, I would recommend you actually to read the notes maybe before even to, you, you, you listen to the lecture and definitely after that just to make sure that you understand all the concepts. Alright, so about um, independence, independent events. Well, intuitively we kind of feel what independent events actually mean. Um, however, um, if we are talking about theory of probabilities and in particular about conditional probabilities, we can actually uh, specify quite precisely uh, what independent events um, actually uh, mean. So, in my particular case, um, I uh, would start with a definition of the uh, conditional probability and you know this from the previous lectures conditional probability of event A under condition that event B occurs is equal to probability of their uh, intersection the event we are interested in and event which is a condition the intersection of these two events which means they the probability of them happening at the same time divided by the probability of uh, the event B which is a condition now graphically it looks like basically this so if you have certain area which is our sample space and this area represents a condition B and this area represents represents um, an event which we are interested in so basically the probability of A by itself is a, a relative area of this uh, figure relative to the whole um, uh, sample space so if sample space has a probability of 1 then the diffraction which is taken by events, elementary events concentrated in this area is its probability. Same thing with uh, event B. Um, the probability of B is actually the fraction of um, all the elementary events which fall into this figure relative to all the elementary events in the entire um, sample. So basically what this says is that uh, the conditional probability of A under condition of uh, uh, B occurs is basically a fraction of this area which is intersection of A and B relative to B so we are kind of narrowing down the entire um, sample space to only those elementary events which are concentrated in, uh, in, in the event B and so we have to disregard everything outside of B because the probabilities are actually shrinking uh, towards this particular area making everything outside of the B probability of zero and making everything inside of B correspondingly greater as if this is a new area of, of equal to one so this is our new uh, if you wish uh, sample space and this is the fraction which is taken by all elementary events which are falling into A because all these elements outside of B have a probability of zero so this area relative to this area is a conditional probability okay that's just a, a deviation back to the definition of what conditional probability actually means but now let's talk about what events we can call independent well from just the meaning of the word independent if I would like that A to be independent of B it means that the chances to occur uh, for the event A should not really depend on whether event B occurs or it doesn't occur so basically the definition of independence is this so 
So if probability of the conditional um, uh, occurrence of the event A under condition that B occurs is the same as unconditional probability of the event A, regardless of whether B occurs or it doesn't occur, then A and B can be called independent. All right, so let's examine a concrete example. Uh, same example as I was using in the previous lecture, we have two dice, um, that, but in this case, um, we are uh, making our event independent. I mean, it seems to be that if event A is only dependent on what's on dice one, let's say dice one is even, and event B is dependent only on the results of the dice two out of this pair, let's say is equal to five, for instance. So. The, uh, the probability, uh, so th the first event, A, is that the dice 1 falls on the uh, even number, and the event number B is dice number 2 falls on the number 5. They seem to be independent because these are different dice, right? Now, the example which I was using in the previous lecture, my condition was that the sum of two numbers equals to 6. Now, when I'm talking about sum, that makes them dependent, right? If one is going up, then another should go down. So we are actually changing um, the whole structure of this experiment. But in this case, when every dice is considered separately, it's, it seems to be like these, the, the, these events are supposed to be independent, right? So let's check it out. So let's check out this probability, uh, this equation, whether it's, it, 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 it's held or not. Okay, so in this particular case, um, since this is a definition of the conditional probability, I have to check that this particular equality is held. So let's check it out. So we need three different probabilities, A, B, and A intersection with B. All right, the probability of A, well, dice 1 is even. Well, that means it's 2 or 4 or 6. Now, considering our um, uh, uh, sample space is still the same 6 by 6 square, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So what does it mean that the first dice is even? So the first dice is even means these and these and these events, elementary events. 3 times by 6 is 18, so the probability is 18 36. Now, what's the probability of dice number 2 is 5? Now, dice number 2, 5 is the fifth column, so it's this one. That's six different elementary events, right? So, this is one half, this is one six. And finally, what's the probability of combined A and B? So, it's an intersection, this and this. So we have three cases. We have this one, two five, four five, and six five. So that's three, thirty-six. Well, and obviously you can check that if you divide this one twelfth over uh, one six, you would get one half. Right? 1 twelfth divided by 1 six is equal to 6 twelfths, which is 1 half. So this particular equality is held, and since this is a basically definition of this, the conditional probability is equal to unconditional probability. So we were just checking that our intuitive understanding of the independence 
when 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 the one de one event depends on the one dice and another depends on another dice, well, that confirms actually that they are really independent. Okay. So we have defined what the independence actually is. Um, we checked on a concrete example, and let's just examine a couple of properties of independent events. The property number one, the independent events are symmetrical in some ways, which means that if A is independent of B, which means that conditional probability of A under condition of B is the same as unconditional probability. Then what, what, what follows from here that event B is independent of A. Well, again, intuitively it seems to be um, kind of true, right? So if I do not depend on you, then probably you don't depend on me. But, you know, it's not always like that and sometimes there is a dependency which is kind of differently uh, formulated. But in case of theory of probabilities and in case of dependency as this particular property, that is true. So symmetrical uh, property of the independence is actually um, the, 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 the very true property of the theory of probability. So, you can say that two events, A and B, are independent, which means A is independent of B and B is independent of A. They're mutually independent. So you don't really have to specify which depends, which is independent of what. All right, now, how can it be proven? Well, that's actually um, trivial. Um, I, I have these couple of theorems, and they call them mini-theorems, or even micro-theorems, because the, the only thing, uh, the, the proof is actually in one line. So let's talk about this. Now, this is given. So I have to prove this. All right, so probability of B under condition of A, again, by definition, is B intersections A divided by PA. Right? Now, what do I know about this? I know this. So, that is given. And I have to prove that this is equal to this. Now, obviously, from the set theory, you know that the intersection is a symmetrical uh, commutative operation, actually. Intersection of A and B is the same as intersection of B, to B and A. So these two, the numerators, are the same, right? So from here, I can actually derive that PA intersect B is equal to PA times PB, right? So if I substitute this into this, I will have that P of B over A is equal to, instead of uh, probability of intersection, I will use this. So it's P of A times P of B divided by P of B is equal to P of A. Now, I kind of easily reduced by P of B, probability of B, uh, obviously you know from algebra that it's not such an um, uh, obvious kind of simplification because you really have to check if uh, uh, what you are um, uh, cutting off from this, uh, from this fraction is not equal to zero, right? Um, so basically all the cases when the probability of the uh, event B are equal to zero should actually be excluded and considered separately. Um, but, um, well, in any case, um, we probably um, do not really have to pay too much attention because we really don't consider events with zero probabilities just because they don't occur. So let's consider that everything, whatever I'm talking about, assumes that probability of e e events is, is not really equal to zero whenever it's really important, like in this particular case. 
but in any case in, a, in, in any case um, uh, wait a moment I think I made a small mistake yes, yes I made a small mistake I, I really have to put it the denominator is P of A right so it's P of A which is actually supposed to be reduced which is equal to P of B probability of B and this is exactly what's necessary to prove all right um, so this is my mini theorem one let's put it this way so whenever event A is independent from event B event B is independent from event A and they are mutually independent or just pl plainly independent events A and B okay Now, the mini theorem 2 uh, is something which I have already basically proven here. Remember, I was, ta I was talking about independent events and definition of the uh, conditional probability as this, from which I derived that The probability of simultaneously happening two independent events equals to the product of their probabilities. It's right from here. So if they are independent, this is definition of independence, and this is equal to this basically by definition of the conditional probability. So they are equal, and from this equality I derive basically this property P of B I multiply by PA to get the to get the intersection. So, again, the probability of simultaneously happening two events, A and B, is equal to uh, their product if they are independent. Now, the reverse, and this is the next theorem, is also true. Because if I have this as given, I can from here get this, right? So from here, I'm getting this and this is a definition of conditional probability or I can derive this and this is also a definition of conditional probability but in reverse order. So that's just another way to prove that they are both equivalent to each other. So, for independent events, the probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events is equal to the product of their um, probabilities. Now, let's go back to example which I was using before with two dice. And let's check if this is true. So we have two dice, right? Um, one is dice number one is even. That's my A event. My B event, dice number two, is five. So the probability of this is equal to uh, 1836 which is one half probability of this is equal to one uh, six because I have only uh, the second one is five and the first one can be one or two or three or four or five or five, five or six so it's six different combinations and finally a and B so I have even uh, first dice and five the second dice so it's two five four five and six five so its uh, uh, probability is equal to 336, which is 1 twelfth. And obviously the multiplication of this by this gives you this. So, but my point right now is that 
this property that the probability of the intersection of events sometimes by the way intersection of uh, events especially independent events sometimes it's called a product of events but that's just term terminology it's basically intersection in the set theory uh, sense so the probability of the intersection of two events is equal to the product of their probability so this is a characteristic property of independent events characteristic in a way that if events are independent then this is true and if this is true, then events are independent, as we have proven in both cases. And this is just a checking for the case which we were already um, kind of considering before. Here is an interesting consideration which I would like actually to end with this lecture. Um, the graphical interpretation of this. Um, I would like to graphically show the mutual independence of the events if one is, in the, is independent from another then another is independent on the first one but I would like to present it graphically here is my, my, my point let's consider this to be my sample space now and I have two events A and B and uh, I will uh, use letters for different areas. So the whole area would be X. Um, this area would be Y. This is Z. And this is, let's say, U. Okay? No, I don't like it this way. Let's use A, B, C, and D or something like this. This would be A, this would be B, this would be C, and this would be D. Okay, I like it better. <laughs> um, all right, so what does it mean that event A, which is A plus B, right? A plus B would give me the A. Event B is A and C. and an entire space, sample space, is A plus B plus C plus D. Okay? So all these areas, A, B, and C, are not intersecting. So D is only whatever is outside of this picture. C is only this piece. A is the intersection of a and B events, and B is only this piece, right? So A is A plus B, B is A plus C, and sample space is this. Now, we were talking many times that the real probability of event A is a fraction of the entire area which is taken by this particular event, which means it's actually graphically A plus B divided by a plus B plus C plus D. So the whole area is A plus B plus C plus D. The A area is A plus B. So their ratio is basically a model of the probability. Now, same thing with B. This is A plus C divided by A plus B plus C plus D. Okay. Now, what is A conditioned on B. Well, we know this is basically the uh, area of intersection, which is A divided by A plus C, the condition. And what do I know? I know that these uh, A and B are independent which means this is equal to this. What I have to prove is that this uh, is equal to P 
e of b over a is equal to a over ab. So I have to prove that this is equal to this. So this is given, this I have to prove. All right? Okay, so let's concentrate on this. We don't really need this. And let's do it. So if this is equal to this, then I can actually um, use, uh, so a plus b divided by this is equal to a divided by this, right? So a squared plus a b plus a c plus b c a squared plus a b plus a c plus b c is equal to multiplication this denominator and this numerator a squared plus a b plus a c plus a d so that's what's given or BC is equal to uh, AD. Now, what do I have to prove? I have to prove this equality. Now, this equality is equivalent to, again, I will use numerator times denominator, which is a squared plus um, ab plus bc plus a squared ab AC and BC and AC. It should be equal to this times A, which is the same. A squared plus AB plus AC plus AD. Right? And again. And I have exactly the same. BC is equal to AD. So, if BC is equal AD as follows from the first one, then this equation is true, then this equation is also true. So this is kind of a geometrical approach to theory of probabilities. Um, and again, from, uh, from this purely geometrical standpoint, let me just redraw this particular picture. So what did I have? I had this plus A, B, C, D. So what do I have here? Uh, let's do it differently. A divided by B is equal to C divided by D, right? So A divided by B is equal to C divided by D. That's what's an interesting kind of geometrical interpretation of probabilities using the areas. So the intersection two words probability of uh, A minus the intersection. Actually it's A minus minus B if you wish, in the theory of probabilities. A minus B is actually this, this piece B. It's equal to C, which is B minus A, divided by D, which is the entire space omega minus A minus B. So entire space, I just use the Greek letter omega. Well, you can approach these probabilities from this particular geometrical standpoint. Okay, I recommend you to uh, go to unizor.com and read notes for this lecture again. 
um, it's like book basically, it's like reading the textbook. Uh, I think after the lecture it would be very beneficial for you. And I always encourage people to, um, to register with their supervisors, which will allow them to um, enroll in the courses uh, with the ability to take exams, which I believe is very important for self-evaluation. Thanks very much. That's it for today. Good luck.